G'day guys, today I'm going to take you through the setup that I used um, for setting up Home Assistant on my Pi. Uh, today I'm going to take, be taking you through on a Pi 3. Um, my actual Pi 4 is uh, currently running my own home server and uh, Pi's are a little bit hard to come by at the moment. But this will comfortably run on a Pi 3. Um, you just may need to upgrade in the future depending on how many things and how many different interactions you have on your system. All right, so jumping straight into it, I use the Raspberry Pi flasher, um, an imaging tool whenever I'm doing any work with Raspberry Pi. Um, one of the main reasons for this is it means if I want to test a Pi to make sure that it's doing what it's meant to be doing, I have the default OSs uh, already there. So the first bit we're going to do is just come down to here and then download um, and install that. I'm not going to make you watch that at the moment. The second thing we're going to do is come across, so search for Home Assistant, um, and I'll stick the link down the bottom anyway, um, but come across uh, and you'll see there's a Pi Setup page. So if you come down on this page, uh, this tutorial uses Etcher. Um, like I said, I prefer to use the Pi stuff anyway. Uh, and you'll see, select either your three or four, the version that you have, uh, grab this link, copy it into a new tab, and that will then download the uh, image file that you require. So, moving on, if you open up that file inside uh, 7-zip, you'll see that it has an image file inside of it. So just extract that somewhere onto your computer, uh, and then we're going to flash using that image file as it is. So moving forward, as I said, I prefer to use the actual Pi flasher myself um, because um, when you have a look inside of it, you've got the option to flash the, the uh, micro SD with the standard Pi OS um, so you can check that other things are working on it. So anyway, to flash with a different uh, image, come down to the bottom and then use custom image. Uh, and in this case, just select the one that you already should have, uh, which will be the um, H -O, uh, HAOS image. Uh, select your uh, SSD card and then hit right. Uh, this is going to take obviously a couple of minutes um, as it goes through and first um, writes the card and then verifies the card. All right, so we're getting to the end of the verify at the moment. Uh, and then it'll come up and say that you have written that image uh, to your storage. Uh, so what we do now is we take our SSD card out and the fun bit, we stick it into our Raspberry Pi. So, Um, as you can see, so I've just got the output now um, that's running straight off the um, Pi. Uh, so you can have a look. So this will take a few minutes to run through. Um, and once it's complete, you'll see what is in effect the um, Home Assistant homepage. Um, and what we are looking for is once that um, normal page comes up, um, we will be able to refresh a website now, the default one I'll put down the bottom uh, is homeassistant.local and uh, 8123, uh, but that um, can potentially change depending upon um, you know, what your setup is, and you may need to use uh, your specific um, IP address that comes across. So anyway, so as we can keep saying now, well, mine is being a bit difficult and is um, detecting an under voltage for some reason. I think my power brick that I'm powering thinks this thing must have died. All right, so now you'll see um, the Home Assistant bits come up uh, and it'll talk about waiting for Supervisor to start. It's gonna take another minute or so now. Um, once again, you don't actually need to watch any of this stuff. Um, 
I've just got it plugged in so you can see what's happening and why you know nothing is happening on that page that I talked about before. Um, it, you know, um, it, it can take a while, and seeing the screen and what's happening sometimes can be uh, a little bit more comforting than just watching flashing lights on your Pi. So now, what you'll see um, if you have a look at the uh, screen. You'll notice that it's got the home assistant URL, so homeassistant.local colon 8123, which is exactly what we want. So if we now come across, uh, we should be able to refresh onto this. All right. Um, and now, so the next part of this is um, it's still setting up, but we're getting a lot closer. So once you've seen this screen here, it means that we are pretty close to being um, running and functional. Uh, it will just take obviously another couple of minutes to set it up. Uh, as the screen says, it could be worth uh, at this time downloading the apps or from the Google Play or Apple Store, depending on your flavor of um, uh, I, like phone, but um, you won't be able to obviously access it until um, you've got the final setups on these things done. All right, so if we come back across to our web page now, so I've given a bit of time um, and you'll see, if you have a look, that's taken for 15 odd minutes. Oh, almost 20 minutes. Anyway, um, so if we come across here, we'll now see that it's got a, we've got a chance to create a uh, new account. Uh, let's just call that new get it um, all right and we can go past these bits um, this you want to set because it gives you a chance to actually set where your um, uh, sunrise and sunset are going to be based upon uh, for me at the moment I'm not overly fussed with that one okay it wants me to set it up Okay, I'm not sending any diagnostics. And you'll see here, um, one of the awesome bits about this is it starts picking up straight away, um, basically a whole bunch of stuff that's on your network. Um, and pretty much right there we have it. Uh, the last thing that I'm just gonna show you, make sure you do straight away, is um, now that we've actually got it running, uh, we just wanna make sure and check some of these bits and then run and check if there are any updates available, which there aren't at the moment. All right, guys, so this is how to go through and set up um, your an instance of Home Assistant. Uh, from here, what I'll do is I'll make some other videos about how I then add in the different systems into this. Uh, so if you watch the channel, there'll be a bunch of different videos that'll be coming out. Um, I integrate a bunch of stuff from Philips Hue, I do some Google integrations, uh, I've got some Grid Connect lights which I've had to set up in a different way as well. Uh, so I'll take through in an incremental fashion on this Home Assistant how I've set up each of those. But guys, um, that's it for today, that's it for this video. Um, I really hope it was helpful, otherwise uh, have yourselves a uh, great day.